Hey, it's Ben Hassel here, and here in this tutorial, we're going to have a look at how we add the scrolling text or new sticker text that you can have along the bottom of your video in Final Cut Pro 10. So the first thing I'm going to do just before we dive into the tutorial is just change a couple of settings here. So I'm going to change my layout to my default workspace, um, and you can do the same. That means we're going to be looking at the same layout in Final Cut Pro 10 as we go through the tutorial. And so then once we've changed the layout, we're going to just close up these two libraries that I've got open here. So I'm going to right click and close my library here and I'm going to right click and close my library here. We can always reopen those, we can find those libraries either in the movies folder if you haven't changed the default location where you save things or in the hard drive um, location where you saved your, your library when you created it. So I'm going to create a new library, so file, new and library and we'll drop this into the movies folder. We'll call this news ticker. So it's going to create a brand new library and then we're going to jump in and create a new timeline, so a new project timeline. And we're going to set this at 1920 by 1080 at 30 frames per second. And we'll just call this news ticker demo. So to add the news ticker, we're going to jump in to our type generators and then into our build in and out options here. And it's this ticker that we're looking for here. So we can click and drag this down to our timeline. And you'll see that we get this single word scrolling across. Um, obviously we can come up to our publish parameters and we can edit the type here. And we're going to grab some longer text for this. So we'll come to this website Lorem Ipsum which gives you this fake Latin paragraphs that we can use. So we'll grab a chunk of this, copy that, and we'll just paste this into here. If you want to see a bit more of your type you can always stretch this out so that you can see and kind of edit a bit more of the type. Um, you can see I'm actually viewing things at 100% here so that when I eventually make my window a bit smaller here, I get this red box which often pops up when you're editing and we can just choose fit as our option there and that will disappear. So you can see we've got our type in there. We'll actually go back to the default layout. We'll just squeeze that up. And then we've got a couple of options for our type generator here. So we can change the bar color underneath. So we can choose a different bar color as we want it. We can turn the background bar on and off. Obviously, that's not going to make too much difference if it's black at the moment until we overlay it over the top of a video. Now, one thing you will notice, and I've noticed when I'm working with a ticker, is that it will play back quite fast at first. And then we can slow that down by stretching this out. So you'll see as we stretch the time of this out, so I've sort of doubled it, um, you'll see now our text will slow down. So we can control the speed of our ticker by having this playback slower by extending the length of our clip on the timeline. And we also have this scroll rate option here as well, which will change the speed at which it plays back. So we can control it in both those ways, either by extending the clip or by increasing the scroll rate. If we increase the scroll rate, you can see I've increased it to 6.5 times the normal speed. You can see it finishes here. It doesn't repeat it afterwards. It just leaves a big blank space. Um, so if we go back to one times, then it's going to finish that ticker somewhere close to the end. And if you want it to match the end of that clip, then we can come to the last frame just by coming to the end here and pressing back once. And if we now scroll over this, I'm holding down the option key here. I'll just slow this down. You can see I can make fine-tuned adjustments by holding down the option key and dragging over the numbers here. That works in any plugin in Final Cut Pro 10. So now I've got that matched perfectly. So it starts here and then ends at the end here. Now there are some settings for the ticker that are in this Publish Parameters window and then there are others that are just our normal type parameters. So you can see here we've got options here. We can Let's just come to the beginning so we can find a piece of type. So if we highlight a couple of words here, scroll down, we'll go to our face, which is where our color is, and we'll just change the, the color here. You can see we can still edit those type elements individually. So we can change the overall settings here but we can actually manually change our color settings and other settings in here as well. So we've got this black outline on our ticker at the moment. If we turn that off, it's going to turn it off for the selected text. Or if I come up and select everything now, 
and then turn it off, it's gonna turn it off for all the text. And obviously we've got all the options for changing our type here. We could make it all caps, change the all caps option here to 100%, so it's all caps constantly. And then we've got other options uh, in here too, but obviously as we go through, we can select individual elements and then modify and adjust this. Oops, I missed the L there. Modify and adjust this, kind of fine tune it. We can change the opacity of our types. We've got all that kind of control there as well. And so that's a quick overview of how we can kind of set up our ticker, um, how we can modify things, how we can add or remove the outline and make other changes that we need. We could even increase uh, certain words in here. So let's grab this line here. We'll increase the size. You can see our text is moving there. And then as we come forward, we have this very large type uh, down the line here. So you can see we can modify and change that type size. Okay. Or we can select it all and type in a type size to kind of reset it down to a smaller size. And we'll just tweak the size of this so it's a bit bigger. Okay, so a couple of other things uh, that we have here. We can uh, modify the position of our type, but it doesn't modify the position of the background. So if we did want to move it in Final Cut Pro 10, we would need to grab the position tool and then, and then we'll come back to our video options and grab transform. It was disabled there. Now we can reposition that, but you can see it's still going to crop at the edges of our clip there so we can position it up to the top here we just want to make sure that it's snapped to the middle this is often where I find the inspector really useful so I can set the position here to zero it's going to set that position to zero and then using the Y option up here in the inspector means I'm only moving it up and down so I can get it just in the right spot so we could have it offset a little bit from the bottom right in the middle right at the top wherever you need it so let's add a video in the background here and then just highlight a couple of things that we might want to think about so I'm gonna to come to my finder here and we're just gonna grab this video. We'll drop it right down to the timeline and we'll drop this down, trim it down a little bit. I use option in the right square bracket here to trim it down here and then we can move our ticker above there. So you can see I've got my ticker raised up a little bit from the bottom. If I want to blend this so I can kind of see the background here, you can see if I change the opacity of that ticker, then it's also changed the opacity of the white, which isn't great. So I could use a blend mode. Um, so I could use like a screen blend mode or something like that. So I get a little bit of that uh, background color in there, but I can't control the opacity of my uh, color bar in here. I can only control the, the color. So you can see even if I drop this down, I'm just seeing the RGB options there. So this is where we can uh, do something cool. So if we have a plugin or type generator in Final Cut Pro and we want to modify it and we've bought an installed motion, then we can right click on any one of these and we can open a copy in motion. And that means we're going to get access to some more settings. So this is the copy of my motion type ticker. And really what we want to do is look for something very specific in here. So you can see when I open this up, we have the project, the rig uh, for the background, which is if we go into the inspector up here, which is the rectangle opacity. So the rectangle opacity is either on or off here. That's the only option uh, that we have. But if we come to the rectangle itself and come to the opacity here and we publish this, we'll save this and we'll save it as a duplicate. I'm gonna save it into my favorites folder here. So we'll call this Ben's ticker, publish that. And now you can see when we come back into Final Cut Pro, we'll come into my favorites, we'll come into Ben's ticker. It will be exactly the same. I'll just highlight this layer below and tap V to disable it. We can copy the type from there into our new layer. And so now you can see I've got the option to turn on and off my background, 
but I can also change the opacity up and down. And you can see I've got my bar color that I can change. And again, you can see I can scroll this up and down. So we can make minor adjustments to those motion plugins by coming into Apple Motion, by making a copy, and then actually adding those elements in there. So for instance, in our ticker here, we have this group of these two objects, so the information and the rectangle. So the type is the information scrolling across. If we highlight this and come to our masks here, I'm gonna grab a rectangle mask and I'm gonna draw this on across here. So you can see now I've added a mask to my information here. So it's gonna disappear when it goes outside that mask. But if I come up to the mask options in the inspector here, I can feather that mask. So I'm gonna feather that here. Let's feather it in. So we'll make a minus number there. And I'm gonna make it a bit taller so the feathering doesn't affect the top and bottom. So we'll just have that feathering on the left and right. So I'm gonna save this now. We'll come back into Final Cut Pro. I'm gonna delete this. I'll drop my ticker back on the timeline. And we will then, once we've got that on there, you'll see that we've got that feathering at the edge there, which is making the text disappear. So I would say that's quite an advanced option to be able to kind of add that feathering in, but you can see it's super easy with that mixture of Final Cut Pro 10 and Apple Motion. So if I change my background color here, we'll grab the text from our previous layer and we'll come into this ticker option. We'll paste that in there. You can see now that we've made this kind of cool little fade at the edge of our text ticker so that it fades in uh, from the right and then when we come to the left, we get that little bit of fading out on the left-hand side as well. So I hope that's a useful overview of not only the text sticker in Final Cut Pro 10, but also how we can kind of make those modifications to type plugins that are in existence already in Final Cut Pro if we have Apple Motion on our system. If you have any questions uh, or you'd like to know how to make different modifications to the text ticker um, that's here, then uh, please do let me know in the comments below. And also, um, sometimes I find it really hard to remember exactly where my plugins are um, or where my type generators are in here in the titles. So if we just type in ticker, you'll see that we've got uh, these three versions. So I've got my ticker, ticker, and ticker copy. So actually Final Cut Pro has made another version of that. And so we can search for, using this little search window, plugins and generators and titles that we can't find. So again, hope that's been useful. If you have any comments, leave them below and I look forward to seeing you on the next video.